we are now assuming that our data is related to each other by this formula. But this only gives us the form of the relationship between the data. It doesn't tell us what the constants beta 0 and beta 1 actually are. So the true values of the betas might lead to this straight line over here. So let's say we have our data points. And let's say the true values of beta naught and beta 1 would lead to a straight line that looks something like this. So this straight line here would have an intercept of beta naught, and then it will have a slope of beta 1. And what we want to do now is to estimate the values of beta naught and beta 1 using the data that we already have. So recall we already have a set of n data points. So we have a set of n data points. So we want to find a way where we can use these data points to estimate the values of beta naught and beta 1. And the estimates that we obtain will be represented by this symbol. So the estimated value of beta naught will be uh, beta naught with a hat on top. The estimated value of beta 1 would be beta 1 with a hat on top. So this is the symbol we use to represent the estimates. So we would use some function of the data that we've collected to obtain estimates of beta naught and beta 1. And then once we obtain the estimates, you would expect the line to probably look something like this. So this line here would have an intercept of beta naught hat and a slope of beta 1 hat. So of course your estimate could be extremely good such that your estimates turn out to be exactly beta naught and beta 1 itself. And in that case, your line, this white line over here would coincide with the red line entirely. But uh, in, usually in most cases, you'd expect there to be some slight deviation. So it's, uh, this is probably what you'll get. So of course, uh, there are many different ways by which we can obtain these, uh, these constants over here. And depending on your methods, you might get a different line. So if you choose a very bad method, you might get a line that makes absolute no sense that looks something like this. So the question now is, how do we obtain the best estimate of beta naught and beta 1? So given the set of n data points we have collected, what's the best way to estimate beta naught and beta 1 so that you get a straight line that's reasonably close to the true line? So in order to find the best estimate, I'm going to define a term called the residual. And the residual will be represented by the symbol. So the residual of the ith data point is equal to yi minus beta naught, uh, beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times xi. So this term over here represents the true value of the data point, the true y of the data point. And then this term over here represents the values that lie on this straight line. So you can see that if we take this term and then we minus this term over here, this will represent the deviations between the true data points and the estimated straight line that we get. And then usually uh, for this term over here, we would use a symbol yi hat to represent this. So we can rewrite the residual as yi minus yi hat. So the residual represents the deviation between our estimated line and the data points. And we want our line to fit the data as much as possible. So that means maybe we can find the best line by minimizing the total residual. So we can find values of beta naught and beta 1 such that the total residual is minimized. It sounds like this might be a possible way for us to estimate beta naught and beta 1. We find values such that this term is minimized. But then this actually creates a bit of a problem because if we consider this sum over here, the residuals can actually offset each other. So let's say we have two data points, and then obviously the best way to find a line to fit these two data points is to draw a line between them. But then I can actually also create another line that looks like this. And then you can see that the residuals kind of offset each other out. So for here, for this case over here, uh, the line at the predicted value is too small. Here it's too big. So you see that the residuals, one would be positive and one would be negative. And then you add, if you add them up, you'll get a rather small residual. So you think your fit is very good, but it, actually it's not. It's just that the residuals are all very big and then they're just offsetting each other out. So this is actually not a term that we could consider. So in order to get around this problem, instead of uh, considering the sum of residuals, we're going to consider the sum of the square of the residuals. So now that we square everything, everything is positive. So the residuals can offset each other now. And so this is actually a viable method. So what we want to do 
is that we want to consider this term over here. So we want to consider this term over here, and then we want to find values of beta naught and beta 1 such that this term over here is minimized. And then those for those corresponding values of beta naught and beta 1, those values would be our estimates of the true values of beta naught and beta 1 itself. And so in the next video, I'll show you the details of how we can obtain formulas for beta naught and beta 1 uh, using the sum of residual squares as our guiding principle. So what we want to do is to minimize this, and then we're going to try to find estimates of beta naught and beta 1 that will help us minimize this. And once we can minimize the sum of the residual squares, the straight line that we get will represent sort of like a best fit, so that there would be, it will be aligned with the least deviation with all the data points.